Okay, so on basic probability, I don't want to just sit here and read to you. So from time to time, stop the video and, and read uh, the information and then um, go ahead and go to the examples. So first of all, what is a probability experiment? Basically, it's a random experiment. Uh, these are experiments that will not yield the same results each time they're performed. In other words, regardless of how carefully they're repeated, you cannot guarantee the outcome with 100% certainty. So a few examples would be tossing dice, uh, drawing cards from a deck, uh, predicting the weather, uh, testing uh, aircraft or insurance. Uh, when you buy insurance, you don't really know if you need it. Drug testing. Uh, a product that might be tested for reliability or maybe an insecticide uh, that's tested on crops. So there's a lot of ex other examples you can talk about. Um, sample spaces are basically the set of all possible outcomes in an experiment. So for example, if you rolled a sing or tossed a single die, the sample space you could use would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is not the only way you could set up the sample space, but it's generally the most popular. So whatever we roll, it will match only one and on, one and only one of those simple events. And these are called the simple events. There's six simple events here, one through six. If you roll two, it matches a two. If you roll a five, it matches a five. Now we might ask for stuff that are less, we might have a less obvious sample space, we could say even the sample space is going to be even or odd, but that doesn't give uh, as much information as just listing all six possibilities. Or you could do something strange, like say the sample space consists of all numbers less than three and all numbers greater than or equal to three. But again, that it, it's best, most, most instances, it's best to use this sample space if you're going to roll a die. So... So anyway, um, one would be a simple event, two would be a simple event, three would be a simple event, and so forth. If we toss two coins and observe their outcomes, we could say the four possible outcomes, head, 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 tail, tail, head, or tail, tail, for the two coins. Well, each one of these is a simple event. Head, head is a simple event. Head, tail is a simple event, and so forth. So you can denote simple events by lowercase letters, like E1 might be the first simple event, little e2 might be the second simple event, and so forth. The order of labeling these is not really important. If you selected five cards from a deck, a simple event could be um, just a five card hand. So this would be one simple event if you selected five cards from a deck. Now, there's a lot of other ways you could select five, or a lot of other five card hands that could be selected, but obviously I'm not going to list them all. Okay, a, an event space is actually a subset of S, the sample space. So your event space can be the entire set S, or the empty set, or any subset in between. Um, an example would be, suppose we toss a single die, and the sample space is one, two, three, four, five, or six. Here are some examples of some event spaces. Let's say E is all even numbered rolls. Well, that would be just, that would contain two, four, and six. Now, this is actually called a compound event because it has more than one of the simple events in here. How about E is all rolls greater than five? Well, there's only one roll greater than five that you can get, and that would be a six. So in that case, we call E a simple event because it contains only one simple event. What about all rows divisible by three? Well, if you roll a die, there's only two rows divisible by three, a row of three or a row of six. So that's a compound event. How about rows divisible by five? Well, there's only one row that's divisible by five. That's if you roll a five. So that's a simple event. What about all rows less than zero? Well, look at the numbers. None of, these, none of these possibilities are less than zero, so that would be the empty set. And then if I said something like, let E be all rows less than 10, well, that's all, that's all six. So in that case, 
your event space is the entire sample space. Another example, let's say we want to select a card from a deck. Let's say the sample space, the sample space consists of all the 52 cards in a deck. Let's say E is the event of selecting the king of clubs. Well, then that would be a simple event because only one, there's only one way to get that. But let's say um, the E would be the event of selecting a king. Well, there's four ways to get a king. I could get the king of clubs, king of diamonds, king of spades, or king of hearts. Let's say E is the event of selecting a green card. Well, if you know, if you're familiar with a deck, the cards are red or black. So there's no green cards. So E would be the empty set. And if I said, let E be the event of selecting a card that's red or black, well, all of the cards are red or black. So that would mean E would be the entire sample space. Now there's two major types of probability. Theoretic probability uses basic assumption and reasoning. Empirical probability is based on experiments or data that's collected. So here are some examples. A coin is tossed. We would, we would assume the probability of heads is one out of two. And we didn't toss the coin a million times and find out that it comes up heads half the time. We just used common sense and reasoning on that. But if we tossed a thumbtack, we might say the probability that it lands point down is 0.77. So maybe we found that out because we tossed it 100 times and 77 times it landed point down. Uh, a pair of dice are tossed. The probability of rolling a sum is 1 6. Well, there's actually six ways to roll a sum of 7. 1 6, 6 1, 2 5, 5 2, 3 4, 4 3, out of a total of 36 possible rolls. So that would be 6 out of 36, which is 1 6. But let's say you toss a domino. Well, a domino could land on its flat side, on its edge side, or on its inside. Well, we might determine that the probability of it landing on its inside is 0.05 uh, because we tossed it a thousand times and it landed on an end 50 of those times. So that would be empirical. A five card hand is selected from a deck of cards. The probability of getting a royal flush, and you can Google that if you need to, is 4 out of 2,598,960. But if a client bought auto insurance on his car, the probability that he files a claim during the first year is 0 0.00125 because they know that that percent of people in, in his category file annual claims. So again, this would be empirical because it's based on data or research, and over here it's just based on common sense. And so you can read the last example there, but but those are some examples of the difference between theoretical and empirical probability. Now, some examples of some sample spaces and events. Suppose we toss a pair of coins and observe the outcome. I already told you the sample space for this. Um, I might be interested in the event of no heads. In that case, there was only one simple event that gives me that. So it's telltale. If I'm interested in the event of exactly one head, well there's two ways to get that, so that's a compound event. Head, tail, or tail, head. At least one head, there's three ways to get at least one head. Head, 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 tail, or tail, head. Uh, less than three heads, well that's everything. Every possible, all four possibilities are less than three heads. So that would be the entire sample space. And the event of exactly three heads, well if we're only going to toss two coins, there's no way you're going to get three heads. So that would be the empty set. Um, if we go to the three, take a three card hand from a deck, well, I'm not going to list all the possible three card hands, but um, that would be the sample space. Let's say I was interested in getting the Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts. Well, there's only one way to get the Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts, and that's to get those three cards. That's a simple event. If I wanted the event of getting three kings, well, there's several ways to get three kings. So that would be a compound event. At least one ace would also be a compound event. There's too many to list, but, but there's a lot of ways to get at least one ace. The event of three kings would be the empty set because there's no way to get three kings if you're, uh, there's, I'm sorry, three red kings. There's no way to get three red kings because there's only two red kings in a deck. 
Example three, um, we roll a pair of a uh, fair six-sided die and observe their sum. Okay, well, this is the sample space. There's actually 36 possibilities because if you think about our counting techniques, there's six ways the first die can land, six ways the second die can land, and six times six is 36. If you want the, if you're looking, if you're interested in the event of getting a sum of two, there's only one way to get a sum of two, so that would be a simple event. A sum of five, there's several ways to get a sum of five, one, four, four, one, two, three, three, two, so that's a compound event. A sum between four and seven, well, that's a compound event too, because there's several ways to get a sum between four and seven. Uh, the event of a sum of one, well, that's impossible, so that's the empty set. And the event of a sum greater than one, well, that would be the entire sample space. So you can see that that experiments can be anything from the empty set to the entire sample space, or basically anything in between for your event space. Uh, let's look at this example. Suppose three candidates run for office, Smith, Jones, and Brown. The probability that each candidate wins, are Smith is 0.58, Jones is 0.12 and Brown has 0.3. So that's the same as saying a 58% chance, 12% chance, and 30% chance. Let E be the event Mr. Long running. Well, that's impossible. Mr. Long's not running. So that probability would be zero. Let E be the event of Mr. Jones winning. Well, that probability would be 0.12. And um, then let's say Smith or Jones. Well, then you would add those two probabilities. We'll talk about this more later, but you would add the probability of Smith plus probability of Jones. So, so to, when you're finding a probability, the probabilities of the simple events in a sample space, so if you have these, if these are the simple events in your sample space, then the probability, two things has to be satisfied your probabilities must lie from 0 to 1. In other words, they can be 0, they can be 1, or anything in between. Um, and also, if you add all the probabilities, they must add up to 1, because if they don't add up to 1, then, then you're missing something. So this, if these two are satisfied, you have an acceptable probability assignment. So go back to our dice. I mean, I'm sorry, our coins. Go back to our coins. All right? There's four possibilities here. Head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. Well, this right here, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. In other words, a, a, a one-fourth or 0.25 probability for each would make sense. So, and because these are all ranged from 0 to 1, and they add up to 1 if you add them all up. But also, if you had said that the probability of head head was 0.5, the probability of head tail was 0, the probability of tail head was 0.5, and the probability of tail tail was 0, that would work too because they all add up to 1. If you say everybody has a probability of 0 except for tail tail, well that would satisfy the condition as well. So I'm not saying that these would likely be the actual probability distributions, but I'm saying that they don't violate any mathematical laws. Now, if you took this probability assignment, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, that's not acceptable because that doesn't add up. They, these don't add up to one. These, this second example is not acceptable because you can't have a probability greater than one, and you can't have a probability uh, that's negative. So that that wouldn't make sense here. Um, read this example here uh, on probabilities and uh, freeze the video if you need to. I'm going to pick back up on and continue this video on a second video where I start with talking about how you calculate the probability of a particular event.